Yeah, I'm feeling permanently scarred was by that. Was that polka or scar? Uh, I think it's the former rather than the latter. I don't know. No, the latter rather than the former. What do you Whatever. Reckon? Have we hit it? Is I don't it? think we're there. That's not it. It's I don't like think we're early there. Taylor Swift. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Cars Guide podcast where we tear down pressure tests and rebuild the issues of the automotive week. I'm James and with me are Richard. Hello. As well as globetrotting master wordsmith and key Cars Guide contributor Stephen Corby. Good evening, good afternoon, good day. This week, among other things, we'll cover driving Ferraris in Italy, where else? The Geneva show starts next week and is looking big. Plus, Hyundai has told us how much the i30N hot hatch will cost. But first, Musk Watch. <laughs> okay, so first up, gee, it's been a big week for Elon. Um, <laughs> SpaceX has launched two what are called Starlink demo satellites, and they're called Tintin A and B. Yep. And they'll beam Hello World to Earth when they are over LA, which is today, um, our time. And comments on Twitter, where Elon is, you know, reasonably prolific, in response to uh, a Musk tweet promoting the fact, range from, I think, he best describes an idiot. William, <laughs> William Grove says, Hello, Mr. Elon Musk. I'm big fan of you. I have big news for you. I was on Mars. I know all. Just try about Mars. I have contact with extremely intelligent people we humans can't see by our eyes. I'm not magician. I prove what I'm saying. So <laughs> He's obviously suffered oxygen depletion. He may there. be. He might be in one of the satellites. <laughs> but then you had this interchange between, uh, we'll call them Kevin and Jimmy. Kevin says, <laughs> this is muskrat code for a death ray in the beginning of the new era. And Jimmy says, he's begun the takeover. And Kevin says, oh dear Lord, he knows we know. <laughs> No, no, <laughs> James and Steve, it's a, it's a good thing. Starlink is uh, a broadband network uh, satellite system. Uh, they are tiny satellites and they're different from regular satellites in that they don't orbit at about 36,000 k's above the Earth. They orbit at 400 and they get around this by swarming. So there's right. going to be hundreds, 800 swarming the whole Earth. And the idea is to bring broadband to the entire planet. What, what's their range? What's their range? Range, yeah. What I'm you, suffering range anxiety. How much broadband can I have? Yeah. Will they block out the sun well, and spill I mean, the word Tesla? There's allegedly so much yeah. junk orbiting around the Earth already. That yeah. it's, we're facing some kind of cataclysm from them bashing into it, each other. So These will be lower than the rest of them. Swarms of right? satellites. Yeah. Oh, well. I, only 400 k's above the Earth. That's great. Well, we can you know, <laughs> fill more of space up with junk. And I imagine this broadband will be free. Well, I'm, I don't know <laughs> if it will be free, but it will, it will have 100% <laughs> coverage apparently. Mm. Now, yeah. also, at the same time, scientists are worried that Elon's Tesla Roadster could contaminate Mars with bacteria from Earth if it ever actually contacts the Martian surface. It's going to contaminate it with marketing and advertising first. It is. <laughs> but it also confirms the theory that humans are just like a cancerous cell yeah. in the universe. So our bacteria is starting. We've been at the moon, but we're going off to the Mars, yeah. so we just start to wreck the whole joint, and it's accelerating. But and there they, you go. they would have washed it first, right? Not for sure. <laughs> but why do we care now? We contaminated the moon. <laughs> no one seems concerned about that. We took cars up there. I think yeah, it's got a full true. detail. They probably even did the tyres. The tyres? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got in clean. there. Super clean. Did now, it. According, speaking of Mars, according to a British astronaut, Tim Peake, Humans could be exploring Mars within the next 20 years thanks to commercial spaceflight entrepreneurs like Elon Musk. So 20 years. Everything is in about 20 years. Everything's it's always 20 years. years. But Musk has committed to dying there, which is, uh, which is handy. Because he, really? he said that I wanted – I did a feature about him recently. He's a fascinating guy. He's, his goal is to get humanity to Mars, but he will go, and he's committed that he wants to die there. He kind of wow. understands the one-way journey, and uh, he's do happy to go there and die, which will finally shut him up. But, like, he'll be do murdered think, there? Or no, I think he'll no, die. He wants to go on the first, the first exploratory mission, and oh. he, will, he will then become, you know, he'll probably – Procreate up there. He's quite prolific at that as well. <laughs> procreate up there and create the first Martian. I think he'll die wow. in the process, won't he, of getting there? It's quite possible. Could be. Yes. Heart Maybe. attack. But then you have to, if you're going into space, you have to go. Branson said if he get, if they when they finally yeah. send a rocket into space, he's going and his whole family going with him. Good his on family them. Good on them. Well, they I'd can, go. They can go bore each other to tears once they're up on <laughs> Mars. And speaking of, you know, being on another planet, we've been told that there's going to be a 4G network on the moon. Yeah. Next year, yep. 2019, to support two Audi Quattro Rovers yep. 
which will launch next year as well. This is all a big surprise, Richard. Also, also uh, an Elon connected mission. Uh, a Falcon it 9 is. heavy rocket is going to take uh, oh. these two Audi Quattro rovers. Um, but they need to be able to talk to each other on the moon. So Nokia and Vodafone are team, teaming up to put up a world or a moon first 4G network. A moon first. Um, Most things on the moon are oh, first. <laughs> but so they'll be driverless cars, I'm guessing. Well, they'll be autonomous. They're tiny. No, so okay. they're, they're, they're autonomous. They're like the little rovers which went to Mars. So they're tiny. They look like a cocker spaniel. Well, they don't look like Hold one. They're on. the same size. They look like a cocker spaniel. <laughs> spaniel. <laughs> Just so that the little green men <laughs> won't, won't be too worried. Dog. <laughs> no, they're the same size as a cocker spaniel. They're little. They're little. Oh, and they, right. they'll, they'll rover around, collect data, and they're going to use the, the 4G network rollover. to talk to each other. Play dead. Send, <laughs> send info back to the, the lunar, the lander module, and yeah. then the lander module will be able to send that information back to Earth. Great. Well, that is something to look forward to. Can't wait. The other thing is, Muskwatch is massive today. There's just so much content. Um, the new CEO of Uber, Dara, I'll have a crack at this, Kosrosahi, is saying that flying cars will never take off because they'll be bloody annoying. Is that Elon saying that? So, no, so Elon's saying that because he said he said in a tweet, if you like drones hovering over your house and the noise they make, then you're going to love the future if, it, if Dara wins it because ah. these drones, these, these driver, these... Scaled up drones. Yeah, these flying cars are yeah. going to be so loud that it's just going to be horrible. So he said the, the future really exists with this Hyperloop, which is like does. a tube that your body squeezes into and you get sucked <laughs> around the planet, or these underground highways, which only rich people will be able to drive on. Oh, I just um, pictured right. human sausages flying around the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's in a very Futurama yes, style. It's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> All right, well, look, that's, that's Muskwatch, a fantastic week. So much to get our heads around, and I don't really know about any of it. So... Anyway, hope Genius you have. does not sleep. Hope you do. Steve, you're with us. Welcome. Um, you've just come back from Italy, a country that you uh, were resident in yes, for a decent amount of time uh, during 2016. 16, yes. And you've, you've ducked back there uh, to drive, of course, a Ferrari, and it's the Portofino. Tell us a bit about it. Yeah, well, it was good to be home and driving Ferraris again, but it was freezing cold. Uh, there was occasional snow flurries, which is always good. And when we got there, they said, look, we found these very special roads that um, we didn't realise until we got here. They're made out of a special sandstone that makes them feel like ice. So when you uh, when you get to a corner, we want you to just pretend how good the steering is. So imagine how good the steering is, because you won't know. And as soon as you put your foot down, you're going to go sideways. So it's like, well, this is going to be a fun day. And it sure was. Great. Right, it sounds and terrifying. It was mildly <laughs> terrifying. They said, "Oh, we're getting wheel spin in." Normally, when we come out of a uh, roundabout in this car, you'll get wheel spin in second. We're now getting it in fourth. So, no, pretty much, no matter what you do, and sure enough, the first circle we went into, it, it wobbled around like a fish. So it was, were, you, were you driving? It was at quite like terrifying. Forty kilometres an oh, hour. Yeah. <laughs> you get used to you get used to fear after a while. <laughs> yeah. I think. <laughs> so this is, but how about your reserves of courage? Did you did you use it all up, or you uh, had some in in in? The tank. I'd already, uh, I'd already scared myself previously with, with a few days in north driving a different Ferrari in snow. So this was comparatively easy. Now but the, uh, the Portofino is effectively a replacement for the California, which had an unfortunate reputation as something of a poser's car, as opposed to your hardcore Ferrari, whatever that might be. Um, and Steve, you beg to differ now. You think the Portofino's kind of come on a bit? Well, there were a couple of problems with the California. One was that it was ugly, which a Ferrari should never be allowed to be. It had a big butt in my mind, and the, the Portofino is so much more attractive. Like in, right. the, in the middle, it is spectacular, and it is—it's better to drive. It's faster, it's louder, it feels more like the real thing. It's still much a very entry, you know, an entry level Ferrari. I'd rather have a four eight eight, but if you're going to have an entry level yep. Ferrari and take your kids around, it's the one to go for. Yeah, and console gaming has some questions to answer in terms of the the steering feel you've got an insight there as to why the steering may not be all you'd thought it was going to be mm, well ferrari were one of the last holdouts to uh, switch from hydraulic to electronic power steering and their their excuse of that is that they were waiting for it to be great and now it's so great that they couldn't resist and uh, i said <laughs> so i was talking to an engineer at night saying but you know porsche porsche kind of admit that they stuffed it up that the new steering is not as good how can yours be better he said well it's not it's not just a case of being better it's what people want he yeah. said the problem is that um we're dealing with a generation of people who grew up their first experience of steering is a playstation steering wheel which doesn't have much feel so what people want is lightness and accuracy not grunty meaty feedback through your hands isn't that extraordinary it wow. made me cry. That makes me sick inside. It does yeah. make me very sad. Yeah. And I said, that's the one failing with the Portofino. Everything about it is great. If you walk away at the end of the day going, what is it that's missing? It's the steering. steering. It's, not that it's, not, it's not that it's 
bad. It just doesn't yeah. have that feel that you want. Wow. Well, there's, yeah. So there's nothing connecting the steering wheel to the wheels apart from electricity. Yeah, yeah which, and it, yeah, that's the feel. That's what you're missing out. Well, on, no, that? I'd say it's an electrically driven hydro hydro or is it electronic? hydraulic electric. Well, it's all drive by wire and it's all adjustable. So it's all, it's all, everything about yeah. it is everything about its signals. But yeah. Wow, because so much of the four five eight, four eight eight, various others, that driving experience is about the road feel, feel. through mm. the steering and and the beautiful weighting and the linear delivery of any assistance. So that's uh, that's quite tragic news. And it's a shame. Portofino, it sounds like a premiership soccer team. No, it's, actually, is it? it's actually a beautiful coastal town in the, yeah. in the northern bit of Italy, but we didn't go there because that was under snow as well. <laughs> hey, <laughs> the beast from the east has now, struck. So speaking about uh, Europe and snow, next week marks the start of the Geneva Motor Show. Um, traditionally, it's one where the, the flash uh, ha- design houses tend to put their stuff out there. I'm talking... Pininfarina and Batone and whatever, but it's become a much broader kind of play these days. And we've got a laundry list of brands that have already taken the wraps off effectively of the cars that they're going to be showing there. There are Lexus UX, there's an Audi A6 that looks like every other Audi, there's a Mitsubishi Outlander, PHEV, BMW X4, Skoda Fabia. But I think the headline acts, there's going to be a new generation Toyota Corolla, biggest one of the biggest selling cars in the world, that's fairly significant. Toyota's also going to, via a race car concept preview, very close preview, the Supra, which is a much-anticipated sports car. Merck will have a new C-Class, and Hyundai will have an electric version of the Kona, and Volvo will be showing the most beautiful wagon, the V60. So there's a lot going on. Does anything stand out of that bunch for you, Richard? Uh, Look, I think a new generation Corolla is about as exciting as, I don't know, like a new version of, you know, Helga bread. Um, it's it's necessary, um, but well, there's it's but there's at the same seed. time, You're sorry, there's linseed, there's the burger, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, Corolla's got a really big job ahead of it sure. because you've got some great cars out there, like the new i30, yeah. um, and the Mazda three is coming out. There's a new generation Mazda three coming as well. Yep. Um, Corolla has traded on that reliability and affordability reputation for so long. Mm. Um, but that that current gen car is getting really old. This better be good. Yep. I reckon. The the one that stands out for me actually out of any of those is the Supra, because mm. they've been. I think it's the FT one was the uh, the concept uh, design, and if and and looking at some camouflage prototype uh, shots, it's looking pretty close to that. So I think it's going to be kind of an eye ra- eye um, brow razor when it actually lobs. Looking forward to seeing what it looks like. Steve, does anything stand oh, out of that I'm excited lot about the Supra. The Supra, the one that leaps out at me. That should be really cool. Yeah. But I, I, what leaps out at me the most is you saying the word beautiful and Volvo in the same sentence. <laughs> <laughs> what, sort of, what sort of world are we oh. living in now? Honestly, I'd encourage people listening to have a look on the Cars Guide uh, site in the news section. We've got pictures of that V60. And, okay, it's always a subjective thing. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, but I think that is a lovely looking wagon and, and uh, frankly, a beautiful car. Mm. So I have to, I have to agree. That's the thing. I, I, I live in this world as well now, where Volvos are actually attractive. I just, <laughs> right. I just can't believe I'm yeah, there. Yeah, I'm with yep. you. I'm with you. I see. Trump's president. Volvo's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Things have gone. <laughs> yes. Musk rules the world. Dogs and cats living together. Total hysteria. <laughs> um, anyway, we also owe it to our listeners. We've been down this path before, but we should go there again. The Australian government has now issued a mandatory recall of more than two million cars. Uh, for the Takata airbag, and it's obviously a dire situation. But I don't know about you guys, what it's shown to me is since the government um, issued that edict and it's been reported in the general press, the broad lack of understanding or lack of awareness uh, of this as an issue, you get a little bit too close to it, I suppose. There are a lot of new general news sites. What's, what's Takata? Mm. Someone, what's an airbag? What, how does an airbag work? All that kind of stuff. Um, it's a big deal, but I think this will possibly tip the balance where a lot of people that have been reluctant uh, do go in and have their Takata bag swapped over. Well, people are going with the hard news angle. Yesterday on the, on the news I heard was all about, you know, people have died. People could die. Yes, mm, there's a one in, They were effectively saying there's a one in two chance that you'll die or at least that your airbag might go off. But what they were saying is they're using, they're using terminology no one understands. They're saying if you've got an Astra, no, an, um, an Alpha airbag, so it's obviously some kind of... De- denoted uh, uh, model that, number yeah. or something. That but, series. And I, I, would have, I would have driven away from that in my car going, do I have one of those or not? Yeah, yeah I just exactly. don't know. They, exactly. they need to make it very clear. So, so what's happened up until now, and this is the Takata thing has been running now for 
for the last five so it years. It feels like forever. Mm-hmm. But it's been a voluntary recall until now. Yeah. So 13 car manufacturers have come forward and said, look, these are the VIN numbers. If, you're, if your car's within these VIN, VIN numbers, bring it in, we'll swap it over. There are still nine car makers which haven't said anything. Yeah, right. Um, and the government has said everyone has to say something. Yes. Come forward. So then the, the remaining nine car makers are being forced to recall 1.3 million vehicles. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the additional big news to this. And the, gov- the government's weighed into this has suddenly just been a, you know, it's it's gone to a, a legislative level now. Yeah. So, mm. Yeah. No, and, and I think that's can only be a good thing. Yeah. That can only be a good thing because one Australian person, sadly, has been killed by a Takata airbag. So let's make sure that there aren't any more mm. um, is all I could say. So... Mm. Off to a word from our good friends at the Winton Motor Company. It's a four-wheeled protest against mediocrity and goes like a bat out of Winton. The new for 82 Winton Turbo blazes from zero to excitement in a heartbeat. To its Bathurst competitors, it's a bad dream. To its owners, it's the stuff dreams are made of. But whether, like factory racer Frank Gardner, you drive it for a living, or simply live to drive it, the results are unmistakably Winton. Isn't it time you drove a real Australian muscle car? Be part of the Winton Turbo generation. Winton. It makes you feel like the man you are. Yeah. (laughs) I think that's from the Heritage Collection. They brought out that material. It's one of the centenary celebration spots. Was that the Steve McQueen? We were were running last year. (laughs) (laughs) But you might ask, again, well, where's Frosty? Frosty Chops, Head of Media Relations at Winton Moco. We do know that he's back from South Korea now. He was up at Pyeongchang for the Winter Olympics. And he did. He pulled a hammy, uh, but not on that skeleton run. If anyone caught it, it was part of the closing ceremony up there <laughs> that uh, it was a flaming uh, skeleton run. And where the um, – the fl- oh, anyway, the flame, where it was coming from. And despite pulling that hammy, it wasn't on skeleton. It was a barbecue career, uh, karaoke bar in Seoul. Mm. And again, the pictures on social media were, were damning. He, I mean, some of them went viral. He had his leg higher than I've seen <laughs> even professional gymnasts. But wouldn't you say in your experience, karaoke bars are more dangerous than skeleton? <laughs> yeah, Most probably, injuries probably. do occur in karaoke bars. He was doing the turn back time uh, routine from right. Cher, yeah. um, which was... She's in town. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So it was a mock-up of the Missouri That's with those right. enormous yeah. guns yeah. on big the front. Guns. Yeah. And it was that outfit which yeah. did the hammy, I think. Frosty does but have big guns. But he's yeah. over in um, Adelaide now for the Adelaide 500. What's he doing there? I don't know. I've only seen around. the occasional text message, but we'll we'll aim to get the lowdown from him and we'll see him sooner rather than later. But speaking of motorsport, Bernie Eccleston, a former Grand Supremo of Formula One, wants the category to go or suggests that the category should go all electric by 2021. And uh, Steve, you were saying that you were hoping Bernie may not be with us by then. Well, I just hope if, if he dies before then, that would be ideal. No yeah. one would be able, no one would be able to it, do it. I would argue that he's been dead for some time. I think I, it's quite he, yeah. he, If he, you have no soul, are you alive? Yeah, I mean, it's right. a philosophical that's question. Right. That's what, right. What happened? Wasn't there like a, a scandal a few years ago? Oh, he was in German court, yes. That's and right. Oh, and sure. Instead but of he actually waved that away. Of course he had to say sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have no idea what it must be like, but when, with that stupendous amount of money that you're sitting on, you can buy the kind of legal horsepower that very few people, <laughs> other people can. Yeah. And uh, that all just went away in a, in a small puff of smoke. But he's saying we must have electric F1. And that it, it's, you know, he's decreed that it will happen. It's but I just so can't strange. imagine it. It's so strange because when he was actually running the thing, he came across as pretty much a Luddite. You know, he didn't yeah. want anything to change. He didn't want to recognise social media. Uh, he didn't really like the electrification of the Formula One cars. He was, you know, let's pretty much keep things the way they are, super conservative. And now I don't know what his agenda is, but he's coming out and saying uh, it should be electric within about three or four years, you know. Isn't that what Formula E is? That yes. Yeah, we've, yeah, already yes. That. we've already got it. We've already got that. We've already done it, Bernie. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now he probably wasn't aware of it. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one is aware of it, that's unfortunate. Well, no, you can't something. hear it, it doesn't happen. So we look, yes, the other thing is that electrification, in my recent experience, at least in the motor industry, is very much a European thing. Mm. Europe is red hot mm. on electric vehicles, as in full zero emission, tailpipe emission electric vehicles. Rest of the world, not so much. And Bernie, as far as I know, during the daytime, <laughs> is in Europe. <laughs> nighttime, well, it's Eastern Europe, yeah. is where he tends to f- sleep fly upside to. down. Yeah, nighttime he is in Transylvania. Yeah, right. Transylvania. He's <laughs> another one who sleeps upside down with his eyes open. Um, <laughs> but, uh, oh, sensational. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I just think electric electrified F1 would be like non-contact sex. It's like... I agree. It'd just be <laughs> awful. <laughs> I agree. I mean, when they, they ruined it already by making it too quiet. It's, it's all, I, say I, I don't go anymore because I can't, I can't enjoy it. St- st- talking of snowfall in, uh, in Europe, the third day of testing... <laughs> I thought it was going to be non-contact sex. At um, <laughs> Barcelona, it was called off because of snow at the circuit. What a bunch of wussies, honestly. However, when it. you look and listen to the footage of these cars, the 2018 cars out on the track... They are getting louder and sounding better. There are some of them that are actually getting up to the point where spectators might even have to put, put you know, oh, earplugs cool. in. They're, they're getting up to a volume level and a quality of tone, if you like, that is um, far, far better. So oh, I, I would goodness. say internal combustion has some way to go. But mm. anyway, moving on. T- speaking of performance, Hyundai's confirmed pricing and spec for the much-anticipated i30N, and it's sharp. Um, we're talking now where... It's going head to head with the likes of the VW Golf GTI. Um, I'd put it to each of you guys. What would you have? I30N Golf GTI. I I haven't driven either. I, I think it's a pretty small group of people that have. But um, just on the premise of it's a Hyundai versus a well-established hot hatch kind of icon, where would you sit on that question? Not, uh, well, I'm I'm going to the launch, the I30N uh, ah, launch in uh, in March. Well, it is March, but the end of March. Um, Thirty nine nine ninety. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. And what is it? Two hundred and two kilowatts, three seventy eight newton meters with overboost. Mm. Um, yeah, I reckon we're entering the golden age of Hyundai. Um, <laughs> this is this is it. And wow. Volkswagen. I mean, look, everyone loves a GTI. Your eternal optimism makes me very sad. <laughs> <laughs> if only Elon Musk was involved as well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, I think, yeah, well, the reports of driving the i30 in overseas, some of our colleagues have driven it overseas and it's fantastic and everything. But to, for me, the Golf GTI is one of my one of my top 10 dream cars, one of the cars you could actually imagine owning. It's yeah. so much performance money. I remember we did a story once about, do you need a 911? Right. The, the GTI is that great. Sure. But on the other hand, I would do it by a Volkswagen because they're evil. <laughs> 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 I mean, it, it does open up that discussion about how much is enough. Um, particularly in the current driving environment. So whether it be the i30N or the Golf, they're going to be almost the top of the realistic, usable kind of sporty car um, spectrum. You, you wouldn't want to go much further than that. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. There'll be comparisons down the track. But there it is. Hyundai is all of it, is knocking on doors all over the market, you know. Mm. It's, um, it's starting to knock off big players in the whole SUV field. So in the mass market, it's big. And here it is challenging the likes of a Golf GTI on spec, performance, price, the whole bit. And it looks good, which I think is important. And that yeah, is the market. You need to yeah. look good in a car for that for that market. And I think it's done pretty well with the design. Yeah, so stand by for some more uh, kind of trimmers caused by this juggernaut, otherwise known as Hyundai. <laughs> Speaking of juggernauts, Oversteer. Here's a word from our enthusiastic friends at Oversteer. What happens when you put three hooligans together in one room? You get a podcast full of hectic banter. Hummer. <laughs> Is for any rugged man. This manly scent possesses oh, well, a blend. That, that, that rules me right out. <laughs> Jeez. Stupid stories. It's it's a cruise ship with all the insides scooped out, <laughs> water fills it up, and then you put a pirate ship in the middle. It's nothing more gangster than a ship in a ship. You're an idiot. And some discussion about cars. So we've got the K cars as well. What do you guys think? There's this new Honda sports concept there. I think it looks so cool. It, it does look a bit funky, mate. The Oversteer Podcast on the Cars Guide website, iTunes, and where all good podcasts are sold. Yeah. yeah they they're wild. They kids are. Kids these days. They are. But they're not as wild as we used to be. I remember us being a lot wilder. Remember we used to play together? What? <laughs> <laughs> In our treehouse? Our Cars Guide treehouse? Uh, okay. Yeah, I, think we were Steve, just... I, I think we'll leave Richard out of the rest of the <laughs> conversation. It's just you and I from here <laughs> to the finish line. You know. Yeah. Oh, funnily enough, here we go. Richard, come back in. <laughs> Thank ja- you. Sorry, <laughs> I'd already started leaving. leaving. Yeah. <laughs> James Dyson has made his automotive intentions clearer. 
a lineup of three electric cars that presumably suck, mm. a very high end model followed by two mass market EVs. Tell us, give us the details. What's happening here? James Dyson, another man I've got a crush on, uh, up there with Elon. Wow. Uh, James is the new Elon. Uh, well, he's not. He's the old. He's, he's the first Elon. Elon. That's right. He's, original he's Elon. a well established Elon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's an experienced Elon. He's a, <laughs> that's right. That's what I like about him. Yeah. Um, so he's going to be coming out not with one Dyson electric car, but with three. Now, the first one he's going to be launching is going to be super high end. Like none yeah. of us, no one we know is going to be able to afford it. All right. Um, maybe the guy who works around the corner, but not us. Yeah. Um, it's, but then, then there are going to be two more affordable models. And he's not going to use lithium ion batteries because they're terrible. Um, he's going to be using solid state, solid state batteries. batteries. Now, um, is that still an emerging technology? Because I would have thought if they were, you know, ready. Others might be using them, or is is that in development? It's no, not many other people are using them. Everyone's still using lithium ion, but there's problems with one of the reasons why the Model Three is taking so long to be, you know, to, to appear uh-huh. is because um, Elon can't find enough lithium to make the to batteries. Make the batteries. Whereas solid state is kind of like the USB as opposed to a floppy disk. Right. The USB is a solid state memory stick, and yep. a, and, a, and a floppy disk is actually an internal. Going to be red. One. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. So. Um, Dyson is undertaking this development of the solid yep. state or he's and tapping like, into something like that's Elon, already... he's going to do it all himself. He's wow. not going to go to a third party who's going to supply it to him. He's going to, he's going to create the batteries himself. Right. He's, he's been brave before, hasn't he? You think about the vacuum cleaner. He created a new technology that no one else thought yeah, would work. That's and true. now everyone has copied that that's technology. It. And yeah. they are very sexy vacuum cleaners. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> all right, now we, we're getting close. Not a hell of a lot of time left, but let's go to a what's in our garage. Richard? You've been driving this week? Uh, a V6 diesel Touareg. Uh, it's ancient. Uh, I think it was one of, the, one of the first cars I drove when I got into this in about 2010. Um, right. It's still the same car. So to be clear, the car you have been driving is a new car. It's a, <laughs> it's it's a, a 2018 car. It's, it's a 2018 car. Volkswagen Touareg. Right. Yeah. I love it. Okay. It's great. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's interesting. I'll, I'll step in there only mm. because of the segue in that I've been in a 370Z Nissan mm. and it, if you count the 350Z that preceded it, as a, it, if you count it as an update of that car, mm. it's been in market for 15 years. Mm. Mm. And wow. there are some parts of it, if they stay still long enough, <laughs> you know, they'll be a bit like Morgan. Yeah. There, there, there'll be a certain demand for this niche car yeah. that is so old that it's appealing. It'll be a retro model. Yeah, I felt like writing yeah. a used car review. <laughs> But um, it, it actually is a new... Does it have a touch screen or Look, the a thing, USB stick? The thing is, it's actually really fun to drive because mm. it is old school. It's a naturally aspirated V6. It's got a great six-speed manual. The rear drive, front engine, it's balanced, sounds great, revs like you wouldn't believe. Didn't they bring in the rev matching technology as well? Yeah, yeah I turned that the first one to have, but you can turn off. it off. Thank yeah, goodness. you can yes. turn that off. Yeah. It is effectively what a lot of Toyobaru... BRZ86 drivers want mm. a bigger engine. But when you do that, you go into a bit of an engineering arms race. You know, if you get the bigger engine, you've got to go the bigger brakes. Mm. And then you've got to go the heavier chassis. And then you've got to... Uh, 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 and you end up with a 370Z, yeah, which yeah. is a more powerful but much heavier car. Yeah. It's still a terrific fun drive, though. It was, mm. uh, it was great to kind of revisit it in virtually unchanged form. Yeah. <laughs> and Steve, you've gone from what amounts to the Italian penthouse... To the local, well, you're at street level. I am at street level. I'm in a Honda City. Yes, it's one of those, <laughs> one of those moments where I say that now, the variety is what makes it awful. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> you come back, you get out of the Ferrari, and everything. Life's great. You're still twiddling your Ferrari pencil in your hand, and then someone enters <laughs> the keys to Honda City, and you go, "Oh, well, this is wonderful." So uh, yeah, I'm trying to enjoy it. It's just, it's just hard from where I'm sitting. Does yeah. it have the magic seats? I think do they, the ones that fold up, and you can put plants in it if you want. Magic is a uh, very, very you know, notional word. It it? Is, yes, is I it think it magic? might have the yeah. magic seats. Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of things it doesn't have compared to a Ferrari, <laughs> but it might, the magic seats are a real highlight. Yes, I'll go right. and play with those tonight. Cool. Well, we'll have some, some words and pictures on each of those on carsguide.com.au very shortly. But with that, I think we've reached the finish line. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. And Steve. Thank you. Thanks, too, to our producer, Barbara, on the buttons. Clearly, he's diagonally parked in a parallel universe. And thank you for listening. We'd love to hear your thoughts on today's show or anything else that's on your mind. Search for Cars Guide on Facebook and Instagram and use the hashtag CG Podcast or email us at comments at carsguide.com.au. Please subscribe and it'd be great if you could rate and review us on iTunes. Give us your feedback. It helps spread the word on the podcast. doesn't take long. would really help. Thank you. Please do it. 
Um, I hope you can join us next week. Until then, remember, the key to happiness is the one that starts your car.